sequence Why Anything But with Kumari Sir at the gorgeous uh, Shang Palace, which is the signature restaurant of all Shangri La hotels around the world. And you love Chinese, don't you? I'm a big fan, yeah. I love, I love Chinese food. It's amazing. It's so, amazing. what happened to intermittent fasting? Uh, we were about to, <laughs> about to close up, so it's good, it's good. Right. Right now, done. you the actor, life, the actor in you began when you went to NIDA, mm -hmm. National Institute of Dramatic Arts. Mm -hmm. Why do you, why was, acting, why not singing? Well, why something else? I think there was just something about acting that's just so, uh, that comes from a place where it's, it's very, uh, very raw, you know. When you go up and get up and sing, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience to which I've just, started experiencing, but acting is something else. To inhabit a different person and experience their life, their lifetime, it's, it's quite, it's quite, uh, it's quite a, a great uh, experience to have, yeah. But you worked in the Minister of Defense when you yep. started life. Yeah, I... And you switched. I did. I was working there for a little while, and uh, I think what happened was, when somebody asked me what my role was, I started explaining it to them, and they had stars in their eyes. For me, I couldn't imagine explaining something more yeah, just ball and chain sort of experience, and they, they uh, for me, I thought maybe there's something else that I should be doing. Maybe there's a, you know, a, uh, a seat that I could be sitting on that would be more, more appropriate for me. Your first break in acting was as the supporting lead in Chandran Ratnam's The Common Man in 2013. Yeah. Um, shot here. Yeah, so. yeah, it was, it was, it was a fantastic experience. Really, it was. I. Uh, I Working with uh, Sir Ben Kingsley yep. and our very own Chandra Ratnam, yep. you had yep. two greats in their respective fields. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. I, I I still have nightmares about the stunts I did on that film. It's it's, it's it was it was intense. It was an intense uh, shoot, to be quite honest. Shooting in Colombo can be extremely hot, but more than anything else, it's um, when you're shooting on the streets on location, it's 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 hectic, man. It's really happening. Everything is happening for real every time. So, yeah, for, yeah, for, yeah for I mean, real. I jumped I jumped off uh, one of these buildings. One of the stunts had me jumping off the top of a building onto two floors, two stories down. The stunt man who jumped before me broke his legs, and oh. I had to jump right after him. So yeah, everybody was like, oh, maybe we should get the stunt man to do this," and I was like, "No, I'm, let's do this thing." And I was arrogant. Um, but it worked out. So yeah, it was it was intense, man. That was that was some really intense shooting. Like he he was he was out for the count after that. So what do you learn from Sir Ben Kingsley? I think uh, a decorum of professionality on set. You know, like there's a, there's a moment when everyone's you know it's like a family and you're joking around. But as soon as the time goes, all right, let's set up. There's just a mode that he slips into, and that's that's something that I really can appreciate. You know, like as a, as an actor straight from drama school, um, seeing that was sort of like, wow, this this is what you want. This is exactly, you know, there was something that I've learned from 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 that, which is be the actor that you want to work with. You know what I mean? When you come to when you come to you, bring your game, yeah. and others will show up too. Right. You know. And that, that's something that I learned from that. You do also shoot in your father's old school, Vesti College. Yeah, we did. We did. It was quite, quite interesting, actually, going back there and seeing, uh, like, walking through those halls. Because I could see Dad, like, every five minutes, he was off into some sort of level of nostalgia where... He was skinny like this. <laughs> that was Alston Cop uh, many, many, gosh, many, many years ago. Uh, Night Walk. Yep. Alston plays himself as a singer, yep. and you're a, you're a detective. Yes, I'm an investigative journalist, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I'm basically uh, running around. Um, the, I play the supporting lead for that to to, uh, to the uh, lead, who's played by Sean Stone, Oliver Stone's son, and uh, I'm doing the best that I can to try and get him out of jail. He's been put in jail for the for the wrong reasons, and yeah, it's my job to get him out of there at, under. Any any cost, he's my best friend. So, it's it was a really great job to play that. It was really good. Oh, here's your tea. Oh, thank you. It's good thank for intermittent fasting. How do you get into a character? In a sense, Shishi. Shishi is thank you in Chinese. <laughs> Sorry, you said. How do you get into a character? What do you do to yourself to get in, into character, on set, on location? It depends you on. Stop on... being James. Depends on the on the on the role. I mean, with with uh, with IP Ranjan, which I played on, on *A Common Man*, it was a lot to do with uh, the where I kept my weight in my body. He was a very very masculine gentleman, so I would sort of 
there'd be a lot of sort of before I would get on, I would sort of, you know, whether it's push-ups or whatever, to get yourself into a heavy sort of mode where he his weight was felt in the room. Small guy, but he felt like if there's a room that he was in, he was sort of overcrowding it. So that was that was definitely something that I wanted to bring to that role. Now with with uh, the other roles that I did with in Nightwalk, I. Um, as an investigative journalist, he's always looking for the deeper story. So for me, it's it's something that I tried to pick up where I was constantly looking around, seeing some, everything that's going on in the room. There's not not one subtlety that goes past. Like, for instance, the, the, the ring that you're wearing on your finger. What does that tell me about you? Is he, you know, what is his phone next to him? When's he going to make the next call? Can I hear that call? Whatever it may be. There was always that level of layer that would kind of, yeah, engulf you in that character. Yeah, whatever you can find there. What about things that have gone wrong? You kind of screwed up, screwed up a scene. Have you? Yeah. That happens as well. You know that when you screw up a scene, I think sometimes you find the most amazing stuff that happens when you screw up a scene. Because you learn the lines, you forget them, and if you bump in the furniture and you don't say sorry, it just makes it all the more real. You know, it's, it's one of those things that um, cinema becomes most entertaining to watch when you don't know what's going to happen, when it's dangerous, when it's... The best actors I've always felt are the ones that, uh, they're not predictable. When you see something that's happening and they're, and they're going through the numbers, then you sort of get bored with the performance. But when you know that this guy is like, wow, I'm not, not really sure what he's going to do, that's a captivating performance, you know, and you want to see that. You know, you want to feel safe, but at the same time, you want to feel like, I don't know what this guy is going to do. Sean Penn is fantastic for that. You never know what he's going to do on the set, you know, He'll, or even... Uh, Jack Nicholson, you know, he'll screw with people just for the sake of it, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's something that I've, I'd I'd love to incorporate more into my acting. Your idols are Marlon Brando, Hugh Jackman, uh, Capriccio, and a few others. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like I mean, Marlon Brando was fantastic. Just, I mean, everything that he did in film has become like a trademark for the way we do modern acting. You know, um, before it was very big and glorious, and everybody was larger than life, and then. What he did was bring a sense of realism that hadn't been seen before. You know, like uh, just the way that, uh, I mean, somebody might scratch their, you know, chin or the way that somebody might look at their, their chopsticks before they, uh, before they start uh, using them, you know what I mean? Like just those things. The details. That, the details. The, like, I mean, life is in the details, right? Like everything is, it brings the fuller world to scope when you do that sort of thing, you know, if you if it's just there and you're rehearsing lines and you're not, you know, sipping from the cup, it's very hot. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't, you won't notice that. You know what I mean? Like you won't, you won't feel that on screen. It doesn't translate. So to to make a fuller, more real world, that's what you need to do. You need to. You Is there to any play. particular role that you wish to play? Any any specific person or character, fiction perhaps? that you're looking at? Do uh, we all have our yeah. ideals? I would, I would love, I would love to play, uh, I mean, I think every actor's dream is to play a biopic and, and represent somebody in real life. I would love to find something that's in Sri Lanka that, that I can play, like something that would be, I mean, we have such amazing history, you know, like the, especially the conflict years between, I'm not say, talking about the, the previous war, I'm talking about I'm talking about the changing of the language to, to Singhalese and all of these different historic periods that haven't been captured on film. I mean, that would be amazing to explore and I would love to do that because I think when, when a country comes to grips with its, its history, ugly or beautiful, I think that's when people start, you can really make a change and you can really start moving on and, and accept what's different. You know, when, you, when you're in a, in, a, in a politically correct system, it's very hard, you know, and I think for me, I would love to be part of that inhabit a character that's yeah that's like that so yeah my last question a very complicated one right if you were to play the role of alston kosh <laughs> okay. in a biopic right right what would you the actor not do that alston the real human being did wow i've twisted the <laughs> you have twisted it inside out um, what would I not do? I would... You know him well, he's your father. I know, I do know him well. Um, <laughs> um, or at least I think I do. Um, I, what, what would I not do? My gosh. Um, honestly, his, his story, and, and you might be 
touching a, a future a future ladder peg right here. You're, you might get, be getting an exclusive, but um, his story is an amazing story, and I think I think he is one of he truly is one of uh, Sri Lanka's icons when it comes to bringing Sri Lanka to the world, and I think what he's done is amazing and I think he's, his story still isn't over and it's still he's still doing amazing things you know what I mean so there's a role getting for so you out there I, I there potentially might be yeah I think I think so I think I think I would I would love to to go through the experience that he does as an as a as an actor through his life experience what it felt like to get off of that plane for the first time and be one of the only brown people in Australia they had like a, a white a white only um, what is it? A yes. white-only policy yes, at that yes, time. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, can you imagine that being yeah. like? I mean, now you know the Sri Lankans are. are you know, we have a, a huge population yes, in Melbourne. Yes, yes. But back then, could you imagine trying to get things? That was a, it was it was extremely racist back then. He got through because he was a burger, but he doesn't look like the typical burger. You know what I mean? Like he's just as brown as as most people are here, and to. You know, to experience that, man, that would be... So there's a role waiting for the uh, for James, <laughs> Frederick James Kosh, the actor, to play his father one day. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. Thank you very much, Sequence Y, at the beautiful um, Shang Palace of the Shangri-La Hotel, uh, Colombo. We've enjoyed this. We next talk to James about his work as a philanthropist and working with the Maasai tribes in Kenya. Yes, of course.